Is there any other major differences between, say, Drupal 8 and Drupal 7? Uh, yeah, considerably, um, and, and not just even maybe from a code perspective. Uh, for, for Drupal versions 7 and earlier, there's a yeah. big sort of, uh, I got this the wrong way around, which one is the one where you don't write, where you write all your own code? <laughs> I think one is not invented here, and one is uh, something else. So for Drupal sort of 7 and earlier, pretty much everything in Drupal is written by Drupal developers. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not entirely sure of this, but I think at some point, really early on with the Drupal phase, there was some third-party code mm. which had like security vulnerability in it or something, which sort of really turned off the maintenance for integrating third-party code. Uh -huh. So everything was sort of written by Drupal sort of itself. Right. Uh, Drupal 8 then was it's like the opposite of that really. So Drupal 8 integrated parts of Symfony 2 at the time, right? Um, and a lot of Drupal 8 is built on uh, a number of Symfony components and a number of Drupal components that sit on top of those. So there is like a real sort of shift mm. in, in sort of the ideology almost of Drupal mm. to sort of bring in a lot of this third-party code, primarily Symfony. Mm. Uh, parts of Zend components are in there, Symfony CMF, right. uh, Stack. Uh, I can't think of everything, but yeah, there's a, a real sort of difference from that perspective. Right. Um, Drupal 7 would probably more similar to like your WordPress style coding as well, so a lot more sort of functional, mm. um, sort of global functions, global constants um, everywhere for the most part. Um, some parts of Core were using some sort of classes and object orientation, okay. whereas Drupal 8, everything primarily is written as, as a class. Right. Uh, yeah, and this has been a way moving away from uh, sort of our old sort of systems to a more modern, standardized approach, which is, is pretty cool. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it sounds like Drupal 8 has had a, a, a massive um, injection of, of change. Um, <laughs> That must have taken a while, a long time to to to, to manifest. Mm -hmm. How how long did that take? Do you know? I think it was about five years, start wow. to, start to finish. Jeez. Uh, and the, the the symphony integration wasn't right at the beginning, uh, yeah. if I recall correctly. But there was sort of a meeting between sort of the the prominent sort of PHP right. developers and um, Fabian Potentier, the symphony maintainer. Mm -hmm. How could you potentially? integrate all this together. Yeah. Uh, and it happened quite organically. Um, so Larry Garfield, who was one of the Drupal core maintainers mm. at the time, mm. uh, is, is very big in the PHP sort of wider community as well. Mm. Uh, and there was I believe, like a need for the thing that he was maintaining. So ah, this thing would be really good to integrate this component. Right. So I think that was maybe like the primary driver for it. Mm. Uh, it may have been database abstraction, but I can't, can't recall. Uh, and then from there, it sort of snowballed and sort of became like the main thing. And then uh, in the end, I think Drupal 8 itself was sort of slow as we wanted to get Twig in. Twig came in quite late. Wow. Uh, but that was uh, quite quite a big thing. Um, yeah. yeah tr traditionally, like every major version has been more or less a rewrite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, from seven, six to seven wasn't too bad. Uh, seven to eight is, is quite a big jump. 